So let's, uh, let's begin to find a comfortable seat. And if you've been seated for a little bit cross-legged, here's a good invitation just to switch that cross of your legs. Let's begin here to rotate your palms facing upwards in a gesture of receptivity. Let's bring the ring finger to the thumb this morning. Invite your eyes to close and begin to shift your awareness inward. It's connecting here with the flow of breath in your body. Maybe if the mind is really busy and active, maybe take a few sighs of an exhale out of your mouth. And as the mind is able to come more deeply into the present moment, you can switch to a nasal breath. Inhale and exhale out through the nostrils. And as the mind begins to quiet, just begin to tune in with the sensations in your body this morning. It's noticing the areas where your breath and energy are able to move freely without encumbrance. Noticing those areas that might be holding a bit more tension. Maybe a little bit of tenderness or discomfort. And create space in your whole body for your breath. Imagine that your internal self can sit taller. And find a conscious softening of your muscles inwards, downwards. And if you haven't yet, begin here to find a consciously longer inhale, consciously longer exhale. Into this space, invite an intention for your practice. And we'll take the sound of OM. You can use that to support your own intention. Send that OM outward, supporting the intentions of all of those with whom we practice. Join your palms in Anjali Mudra. And feel free to listen or to join in. Let's take the sound of OM. Oh. Nice big inhale here. Hold your breath inwards at the top of your inhale. And then exhale, release your breath through your mouth. Bring your hands back to your lap. Let your eyes open as we return here. And if like me, you have a block beneath your seat, just bring yourself more fully to the ground. If you have a blanket, that's fine. You can keep that blanket here. I'm gonna go ahead and mute everyone so that we can begin our practice. Perfect. Sorry. Okay. Good. 
So let's find our um, knees coming forward, feet in front of us. Actually, we could stay cross-legged. Um, what I'm trying to clumsily say is find a way to bring one foot inwards. We're going to begin with some foot massage this morning. And very often we do begin with foot massage. That's because the fascia that connects the muscles and tendons of our body root down in the feet on the bottoms and the tops of our feet. So I'd like you to begin on the ball of your foot, the fleshy area just beneath your toes. And I'd like you to begin by working your thumbs outwards from beneath the big toes and the pinky toes inward towards the center of the ball of your foot. Just back and forth, really helping to stretch and release tension in the ball of your foot first. At the same time, taking your fingers to the line of foot on the top of your foot underneath the toes. So thumbs are pressing on the ball of your foot. Fingers are pressing on that line just above the toes. So we're really stretching and releasing the tops and the bottoms of where our fascia connects and the tops and the bottoms of the feet. And if you notice any tenderness here on your foot, feel free to spend a little bit more time there. As you're pressing into the top and the bottom of this foot, go ahead and spread your toes away from each other. Take a nice big spread and then relax your toes. Let's bring our awareness now into the arch of your foot. So I want you to bring your thumbs directly down the center of your foot. This is our plantar fascia. So for some of us, this might be very tender area. We'll begin just walking the thumbs up and down from the ball of your foot at the top to the center of your heel at the bottom, just following that middle line in the arch of your foot. And then I'd like you to begin to bring your thumbs outward to the two outer lines of the arch of your foot. As we're able to release these tight muscles, we're doing a few things. We're encouraging the body to center our weight more evenly when we stand. And when we're able to come into that alignment on our feet, our hips, and our shoulders just naturally fall into a more healthy alignment. But we're also preparing the body to stretch. So by releasing the fascia in the feet, we're going to have a little bit more space to move as we begin our asana practice. I'm bringing now the thumbs to the inner and the outer heel, spending a little bit of time on your inner and outer heel. And I know we have less sensation in this area, but there is fascia here that we want to release. And then taking your foot here, take your hands to the top of your foot, one hand to the top of your foot, toes in the outer side of the hand, and just curl the toes backwards. So we spend a lot of time with our toes pointing outward, sole pointing inwards. We're going to take that opposite stretch here. This is a good stretch to regularly do if you find that standing, your feet start to hurt. Maybe the balls of your feet are getting a little thin. This is a good stretch to do to bring more padding to the sole of your foot, specifically to the ball of your foot. So just pulling the toes backwards here. Nice deep yogi breath here. And then we'll bring our awareness and attention to our other foot. So starting here with the ball of your foot, working your thumbs out to the edges of the ball of your foot, just beneath the big toe and the pinky toe and inwards towards the center. And at the same time, fingers are pressing just beneath the line of toes and the top of your foot. an exercise that would be really beneficial just to incorporate into your everyday, maybe part of your bathing routine or evening TV watching routine. And so just a few, a little bit more time, really focusing on releasing the tops and the bottoms, the lines just beneath the toes. And as you're ready, we'll bring that pressure, that massage into the center of your foot, into that line of plantar fascia in the middle of the foot. 
And for those who are encountering more tension or more tenderness in this area, another good exercise to do, and it's a little less focused than this massage, but it is helpful for unlocking really stiff fascia is rolling the foot on a ball. It could be a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. It's also a really nice exercise for keeping healthy feet. Taking this pressure now from the center of the arch of your foot now out into the left and right arches of the foot, so the inner and the outer arch. And if you know about yourself that you tend to drop the weight into one side, so if you wear out like the insides or the outsides of your shoes faster, usually that means that the other side needs a little bit of this massage. So if you know that you tend to drop the weight inwards on your foot, maybe the outer arch needs a little bit extra releasing with this massage action. And then bringing here that massage to the inner and the outer heel. Rubbing along the inner and the outer heel. Good. Then we'll take that nice little toe stretch. So bringing your foot upwards, just hold in that line of flesh just beneath the toes. Let your toes stick out and just use your hand to pull your toes backwards. And depending on how often we do this movement, this could be pretty intense sensation for some of us, and that's okay. Breathe into what you're feeling. Don't cross the point into feeling on um, pain. We don't want to feel an electrical or a stabbing sensation, but sometimes a strong stretch could mimic pain almost, right? So sit with that differentiation between good stretch and pain. And then releasing your foot here. Let's find hands and knees. Bring yourself to hands and knees. Toes here could be curled under or not. Drop your belly down, lift your gaze upwards. Nice big inhale. Exhale, round into your spine. Drop your gaze down. And we're just moving with your breath. Inhale, long spine, lifted eyes. Exhale, rounding in. Eyes here could be open, could be closed, really going into your own body's experience of this moment. Good, bringing yourself here to a neutral spine. Gaze down, spine parallel to the ground. Begin to spread your fingertips away from each other. Spreading your fingertips away from each other, grip the ground with your finger pads. Here, curl your toes under. Use an inhale, send your hips up and back, coming into our first Adho Mukha Svanasana, first downward dog. Use your hands, press the floor away from you. Stretch both hip points up and back. Let your neck here be nice and long, head heavy, really fully release the weight of your head down, maybe even tuck your chin in slightly, and then release your head side to side. Invite here a softness into your jaw. And then tuck your chin in and out, nodding your head yes. Bring yourself here more to a point of stillness. Take a big breath in. Exhale, let that air pour out of you, stretching the backs of your legs here. Nice inhale, lift your gaze up, lift your heels up. Use your exhale, walk your toes forward towards that top line of your yoga mat. As you arrive, take a half stretch. Exhale here, let your body round, release the weight of your head down. Let your knees here bend as much as they need to to bring your hands either to blocks or to the ground. We'll do that again. Take a half lift upwards, fingertips to your knees or on the ground, gaze down. Exhale, let your spine lengthen longer over your legs. Inhale here, bring both hands to your hips. 
Exhale, press into your feet, rising up, coming to your Tadasana. Use your inhale, stretch your fingers tall. Exhale, bring both hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. Big, beautiful inhale here, stretch up. Exhale, lengthen forward, lead with your heart as you bow into your forward fold. Take your half rise as you inhale. Exhale, soften in. Good. If you have blocks beneath your hands, scoot those out of your way to bring your hands fully to the ground. Step your feet backwards here, coming back into the shape of our downward dog. If you feel that your hands are holding more weight than your feet, bend into your knees, exaggerate the press up and back of your hips. You don't need those straight legs to experience the nice spinal release. That is really one of the main benefits of this shape, our downward dog. So keep those knees as bent as you need to be. Keep the weight centered on your feet and on your heels. Nice breathing here. Good. On an inhale, lift your gaze. Exhale, bring both knees down to the ground. As our knees land, know that you have the opportunity to either double your yoga mat or place a blanket beneath your knees. Let's bring our right foot forward between both hands. Good. Left toes here could stay curled under. That's going to give our body a little bit more stability or they might uncurl. That's going to bring the hips a little bit more forward, send some stretch into that front quadricep. Hands could be lifted on blocks. So if the floor feels a little far, bring your hands on up to blocks here. Let's inhale, lift your gaze. Exhale, drop your gaze down, straighten into your front leg. We'll inhale, bring your hips forward, pull your gaze up. Exhale, straighten into that front leg. Begin here to find your own breath, inhaling forward, exhaling back, layering on this movement with your own breath pattern so that you're never not moving in synchronicity with your breath. And the next time you find your hips coming forward, <clears throat> we'll pause here, hips forward. Plant your left palm down on a blocker on the floor. Bring your right hand to your front knee, right hand to your front knee. Roll your shoulder open, lift your gaze upward. If that causes discomfort or pain in your neck, you can do the same shape with your gaze rotating down towards your supporting hand. So we're either looking up to the sky or rotating down. Good, might stay here, right hand in your hip, or might choose to stretch those right fingertips up. Steady breath here as we breathe. Notice the way your breath is moving through your body. Good, on an inhale, let's bring ourselves back down. Plant both hands onto the ground. Bring your right knee backwards underneath your right hip. Good, if they're not already, separate your knees so that they're hips width distance apart. Curl your toes under. Spread your fingertips wide and bring your hips up and back, returning to the shape of our downward dog. Let your neck here really be in clear alignment with your spine. So we're not lifting the head and looking forward. We're really letting that neck come into full alignment with the rest of your spine. Keep the arms straight and strong, but let the space between your shoulder blades soften. Come back into an awareness of your breath in this shape.
big inhale here. Let's exhale, bring both knees down to the ground. As your knees land, give yourself that padding that you might need here, and we'll bring now left foot forward between your hands. So give yourself those blocking support beneath your hands if you need them. And here, we'll soften your hips forward, pull your gaze up, nice inhale here. Exhale, straighten into your front leg. Let your spine round as your gaze drops. Come here into your breath pattern, inhaling forward, looking up, exhaling backwards, looking down. Make these movements as big or as small as serves your body today. Use your practice to meet yourself exactly where you are. So not trying to force ourselves into any particular shape, just exploring what mobility, what stability is within the body today and how can we work with that? Good, next time you come forward, hips forward. Let's plant your right hand down. Bring your left hand to your left knee. As your left hand comes to your knee, roll that shoulder open. Lean some weight ever so slightly more into your supporting hand. Maybe lift the gaze, maybe drop your gaze down. Maybe peel those fingertips away from your knee and up towards the ceiling, breathing here. So I'd notice if you're holding your breath to hold this shape, if you can allow the breath to move more freely. Big inhale here, holding for the exhale. Let your next inhale lower your lifted hand. Invite your front foot backwards. Plant your knee underneath your hip. Good. Here, let's come to a tall kneeling position. So tall kneeling, hands on our hips. Toes here curled under. Give yourself a little bit more stability. We'll bring one foot forward. Good. One foot forward. Lean forward. Press into your back toes. Lift that back knee up. Bring your other foot forward. Bring yourself all the way to standing. If that doesn't come seamlessly for you, feel free to use your hands and just come up to standing. As we're at standing, let's find our way to that top line of our yoga mat. Take an inhale. Sweep your fingers up. Exhale, pour yourself forward into the shape of our Uttanasana. Take your half lift here, Ardha Uttanasana. Soften inward. Release the weight of your head. Find that softening side to side of your head. That drawing in and out of your chin. Good. Inhale, both hands to your hips. Roll your shoulders open. Use your exhale. Rise up here to Dasana. Inhale, stretch for the sky. Exhale, bring your hands towards each other. Good. Bring your hands to your hips. Step your front foot backwards. Keep that, he, I said front foot. <laughs> I guess that's your choice of front foot. Keep your back heel lifted. Good. We're going to bend into that front knee. Keep your back heel lifted. Spin the inner edge of your back thigh towards the wall behind you. It's a really strong back leg. Maybe you can inch that front foot forward a little bit more. Bend into your front knee. Good. Notice your weight centered here. So we're not leaning over that front foot, really centered between front foot, back foot. From here, stretch your fingertips up. Good. Bring your hands to shoulder height. Bend into your elbows. Bring the forearms parallel to the ground. So we have straight lines from shoulders to our elbows. Just begin to turn here. 
fit. So we're playing with balance. That back feels that back heel is lifted away from the ground, which means we're working with a little bit of instability as we introduce some movement into the upper back. This movement can be as big or as small as serves you today. We're looking to release these tighter muscles that tend to surround the shoulder girdle, really working into the stability of the body, finding a little bit more mobility. Good, let's bring ourselves back to center. Stretch your fingertips up to the sky. Bring your palms towards each other. Hop your back foot in halfway. Good, drop your gaze down to the floor. Keep your back heel lifted. Big inhale here. Gaze is down. Spine is long. Exhale. Hinge forward at your hip. Lift your back foot away from the ground. Coming here into a variation of our warrior three. If you need to hold a wall to find your balance, feel free to do that. Activate your back foot. Press through your heel. Point your toes down to the ground. Don't need to be parallel to the ground, but you might be here. Breathe easy. Good, inhale. Exhale, let's swing your lifted leg forward. Bring that knee in and up. If you need to pause, touch the toes down, that's okay. Keep your knee lifted, gaze fixed in a non-moving point. Exhale, lower your lifted leg. Inhale, stretch your fingers to the sky. Exhale, pour yourself forward, forward fold, Uttanasana. Find your half lift here, gaze down, spine long. Exhale, soften in. Use your inhale to bring both hands to your hips, both elbows pointing up. Exhale here, press into your feet to rise. Inhale, stretch your fingers to the sky. Exhale, bring your hands towards each other, heart center. Inhale here, reaching up. Exhale, track your hands through heart center. Good, onto your hips. As your hands find your hips, step your opposite foot backwards. It says second foot comes back, front knee bends, back heel remains free here. Just take a moment here, find your foundation. Always the option to go a little wider laterally if we need that space. Always the option to shrink the space between your back toe and your front heel. So find some stability in your own body. Then we'll bend a little bit more deeply into that front knee. Good. Spin the top inner edge of your back thigh up towards the ceiling. Send a line of energy radiating outward towards your big toe. Sink into your front hip. Use an inhale, stretch your fingertips up. Exhale, bend at your elbows. Take that little hinge forward at the elbows of the forearms. And again, find a release here into your shoulders. Softening into the shoulders. Keep your breath steady. Good, one more time. Bring yourself to center, stretch your fingertips up. Invite your palms into heart center here. Let your gaze drop just above that top line of your yoga mat and bring your back foot halfway in here. Good, heel stays lifted, spine lengthens long. Press away from those back toes, softening down. Big inhale. As you exhale, lean forward, lift your toes either a little or a lot away from the ground, coming here to your warrior three, breathe deep. And again, always that option to hold. If you need some support, if you're feeling shaky, it's not cheating to hold on to something. You're still improving your balance, even if you're using support. Big inhale here. Let's exhale, swing your lifted foot forward, bring your knee upwards, breathing here. And exhale, soften your lifted leg down. Good, inhale here, stretch tall. 
Exhale, lengthen forward and down, coming into your forward fold. Take your half lift and soften in. Bring both hands to your hips as you inhale. Roll your shoulders open. Exhale, press into your feet. Rise up. Good. Take your blocks. If you're working with blocks, take your blocks and set one on each short line of your yoga mat. And again, we don't need blocks to do this practice, so don't panic if you don't have them. Let's bring both hands to your hips, and let's turn to face the long line of our yoga mat. Stretch your heels away from each other. Bring yourself into a wide-legged stance. Good. Let's rotate the right toes to face the right. Keep your left toes facing the long side of your yoga mat. Begin to bend into that right knee and straighten. So we'll exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Good. Keep the outer edge of your back foot really firmly connected to the ground. Just awakening these muscles. Getting a little strength in our muscles, but also releasing into these muscles. Next time you come forward into that bent right knee, let's stay here. Good. Notice if you feel like you're surfing over this front leg, bring your weight backwards, lift up on the back inner ankle, really press actively through the outer edge of that back foot. Good. Still hands and hips. Let's bring the gaze forward towards the right knee. Lift your right heel away from the ground. So coming onto the balls of the right foot. From here, you might find you have a little bit more space to bend more fully into that knee. Sit down, so to speak, and then settle that front heel to the ground. Stretch your fingertips away from each other. Draw your shoulder blades towards each other on your back body. Gaze still forward over now the right hand. You can find an easy breath here. Good, inhale, straighten into your right leg. Bring both hands to your hips. Reach for the waiting block. Bring that waiting block on the inner edge of your right heel. Extend your right arm. Keep your left hand on your hip. Lengthen your right arm outwards. Rotate your palm to face up. Take an inhale. Get long in your spine. Exhale, lengthen over your long leg and then drop your hand down to your waiting block. Good. If your block is too short, what's going to happen is you're going to turn heart down. So if you turn heart down to reach your block, that means your block's too short. Instead, you want to bring your hand to your leg. Keep your heart facing forward. If your block is too tall, you're going to have a really deep Bend deep wrinkles in the wrist of your right hand. Go ahead and change the height if you need to. Good. With your left hand on your left hip, roll that left shoulder open. Lean your shoulder girdle backwards. Maybe stretch the right fingertips up to the sky, coming here into our trikonasana. Good. What adjustments can you make in your body to allow yourself to breathe more easily here? Big inhale, exhale, lower your lifted hand. Drop your gaze to your right toes if it's not there already. Isometrically press your heels away from each other. Let that action lift your torso upwards. Rotate the 10 toes to face that long side of your yoga mat. Scoot that block out of your way if you need to. Big inhale here, stretch long. Exhale, step or hop your feet towards each other. Good, inhale, get tall, reach for the sky. Exhale, lean forward with your heart, bring your fingertips down, bend your knees if you have to, coming into a symmetrical forward fold. 
Take your half lift, reach the crown of your head forward, sit bones backwards, then exhale, soften in. Inhale, both hands to your hips, roll your shoulders open, use your exhale, rise up here. Step your heels away from each other. Hands on your hips, rotate left toes outwards. Bring your gaze looking towards the left knee. Bend into your left knee. Watch your knee track over your middle toes towards your pinky toe. Straighten into that left leg. Exhale to bend. Inhale to straighten. Move with your breath here. Good, next time we bend into your left knee, let's pause here. Good, refining our warrior. Bring your awareness to this back foot. You want the outer edge, pinky side edge of your foot pressing firmly into the ground. Inner ankle reaching up, right? So we're not collapsing in an inner ankle. Gaze forward again, lift your left heel upwards. As the left heel lifts, you might find a little bit more space to bend more fully into that left hip. Soften your heel back to the ground. Float your arms upward. Gaze here forward over the left hand. Feel the tailbone pointing directly down between both heels. Extend upwards away from your tailbone. Reach your spine long. Find a steady breath. On an inhale, straighten into your left leg. Bring both hands back to your hips. Reach for that block. If you have one, bring it to the inner edge of your left heel. Keep your right hand connected to your hip. Lift your left hand upwards to shoulder height. Rotate your palm to face the sky. Good, press into both heels here. Get tall, reach up, big inhale. On an exhale, extend long over your front leg. Bring your hand down to your waiting block. Good. And knowing that these asymmetrical poses very often mean we need something different on each side. So here, if you need to go lower on your block, do that. If you need to go higher away from the block, do that. Keep your top shoulder stacked over your bottom. Roll your top shoulder open. Lean the whole shoulder girdle backwards towards the wall behind you. And on an inhale, maybe that top right hand wants to reach up and away from your hip. Gaze here could be up, could be straight ahead, could be rotating down towards that front leg. Breath here steady. Make those micro adjustments that your body needs to allow your breath to continue flowing easily here. Big inhale here. Let's exhale, send your top hand back to your hips if it's not there already. Drop your gaze down towards that front foot. Good, imagine peeling your heels away from each other to rip your mat in half and let that action lift your body upwards. Good, scooting that block out of the way, rotate the 10 toes to face forward. Step or hop your feet together here. We'll come back to that top long line of our yoga mat. Use an inhale, stretch your fingers to the sky. Exhale, lengthen long, coming into the shape of our forward fold, Uttanasana. Take your half lift here. And exhale, soften in. <clears throat> Bend your knees enough to bring your palms to the ground. Step both feet backwards, coming into the long line of our spine in our downward dog. 
let yourself breathe here. If the outer body is comfortable in stillness, if you need some movement, some bending, straightening of opposite knees, go ahead and give yourself that. Next exhale, let's bring both knees down to the ground. And as our knees come to the ground, let's transition to a seated position. Seated position with, if you're using them, with your blocks in front of you on their shortest height. And as we come seated, we'll swing the feet forward, point the knees up to the ceiling. Good, go ahead and set your feet up on the blocks if you're working with them. And again, no biggie if you don't have blocks, that's fine. Bring your hands behind your knees, roll your shoulders backwards, lean back, keep your spine long, lift your gaze here. Good, might stay here, might lift both feet away from your blocks, coming here into our boat pose, into our Navasana. Might stay here, might extend the arms forward. Breathing here. Big inhale, exhale, lower your feet onto blocks or onto the ground. Take a hold of the front of your shin, curl your spine inward, breathing here. We'll do a second round of our boat pose. So let's begin to straighten the spine, bring your hands to touch, fingertips touch behind the knees, roll your shoulders open, begin to lean the heart back. Spine nice and long, shoulders reaching backwards, maybe staying here, maybe reach your heels up. Maybe stretch the arms forward. And exhale, lower your heels down. Here, I want you to stretch your legs long. So if you have blocks, Take those blocks with you. Set your heels up onto the blocks as your legs lengthen long in front of you. Use your hands to draw the flesh away from your sit bones. Take an inhale here. Stretch your fingers up. Exhale. Let yourself lengthen forward, coming into an easy forward fold. Hands can land wherever they do naturally. Easy breath in. Easy breath out. And then an inhale, begin to walk your fingertips in, lift your torso upward. Bend into your knees, bring your feet to the ground. And if you've been using blocks, just shift those blocks off to the side. Bring yourself onto your back body with your knees pointing up to the sky. Extend your arms flat on the ground. Make a straight line from your shoulders, elbows to your wrists, shape of a T. Press into your feet, lift your hips away from the ground ever so slightly. Shift your hips left and then lower your hips down. Let your knees fall away from your hips to the right. Gaze here, looking to the left, away from your knees. Maybe the right hand wants to take a hold of your top knee here. As we breathe here in our reclining twist, breathing easily. And then if you have a hold of your top knee, release that hand outward. Use an inhale, bring your whole body back to center, knees and hips and heart. Press here into your feet to slightly lift your hips. This time, hips will shift to the right. Knees will fall to the left. Gaze to the right. 
can come in here into our easy reclining twist. Sara Parvriti. Here on an inhale, bring your whole body back to center. Hug both knees into your chest here. Take a nice big inhale. And then exhale, let your legs come back to the ground. Let your hands rest by your side, palms facing up. And if your low back is feeling a little discomfort here, walk your feet outward. Let your knees knock inward, coming into our supported TP of the knees. Or let your legs lengthen long, coming into our more classic Shavasana, a pose of ease. Let your body soften into the ground beneath you. Give yourself permission here to release control of your breath. Let your body soften into a state of deep relaxation where the multi-layered benefits of this practice are able to sink in. Allowing the mind to wander, the body to relax. And allow here for your awareness to gently return to your breath. And as your breath becomes more aware, 
Find yourself, find the small movements in your body that make sense. Wiggle maybe into the fingers and the toes. Think of the small movements in your wrists, in your ankles. If you're ready, take a nice big stretch of the body, fingers backwards, toes forward. And then bring your knees in, wrap your arms around your knees, give yourself some gentle movement side to side. Let yourself rest easy on one side. Using your hands, press yourself up into a comfortable seat. And keeping the awareness inwards, draw your palms towards each other. Let your chin come in. Eyes closed. Let your awareness just center at this heart center, heart space. Allow yourself here to notice those subtle benefits that we receive from practice. And checking in with your physical self. Notice the way your energy is moving in your body today. Noticing how your breath is moving in the body. And the busyness or quietness of your mind. I'm always so grateful to be able to share a practice with you. Thank you for taking the time to connect with your breath and your body today. Thank you all.